Hi guys. So I went shopping yesterday and I picked up three things. Um, I'm going to go over two of them first so that I can spend a bit more time talking about the third thing um, because I have quite a lot to say about it at this point in time. So the first thing I picked up is an eye cream because um, I was previously using the Clinique All About Eyes Rich and I got that about a year and a half ago and um, I thought it was time to throw it away and get a new one because you know creams do expire and it's best not to keep something for over a year because the bacteria might build up and all that so um, I was looking around and I ended up picking up the Biotherm Aqua Source non-stop eye gel which looks like this um, I think I'm not sure if this is the normal size it probably is it's a 15 ml tube and it's comes in this really cute packaging um, when I open the cap it sort of tends to gush out so I, I won't be able to show it for very long but you can see the clear gel there coming up um, so maybe it's packed too full or there's some air trapped in there but it tends to come out once you open the cap anyway this gel is um, really nice it's part of their Aquasource line and every product within that line um, contains each product contains um, 5,000 liters of mineral um, like spring thermal water concentrated into that one um, cream or gel so um, it's really really hydrating and it's supposed to provide you with um, non-stop hydration for I think um, 12 hours so uh, I've used this one so far last night um, before bed uh, I'm only planning to use it in the night time because in the morning I use my Garnier Tinted Eye Roll-On and that contains caffeine and it's sort of like um, an eye cream and concealer in one, two in one so I'm just using this at night and so far I really like it um, it goes on really smooth, it's really refreshing and it sinks in pretty quickly and it just leaves your um, eye area feeling really hydrated and you don't need much of this because um, it does have a really concentrated um, uh, amount of water so I like that and that was about 10 pounds and then I got these all in Hong Kong because I'm there right now but it's about 10 pounds and then I really wanted to try out a Japanese mascara because um, you know, I have really short, straight lashes and they don't tend to hold a curl. And after watching Coco LaRue's um, video about her favorite mascaras, she said that um, this particular one, the brand is Majolica Majorca. Um, she said it was good and it's called Lash Gorgeous Wing and it's black. It comes in this little tube which is slightly smaller than the regular mascara size. Um, it's like 6 milliliters as opposed to the usual 7.6 or so. But anyway, this is a fiber mascara. It has a natural bristle, um, natural hair bristle, very standard. And you can see, if you look closely, you can see the fibers. Um, I've used this today, and you know, I'm not crazy about the results. I do like fiber mascaras because they stay on all day and they're pretty much waterproof, um, and they don't uh, flake off or anything, and they leave your lashes feeling um, soft and still like normal hair, not crispy or anything. And they're very, this one is very easy to remove. Um, I wore a bit of it last night as well after I bought it and um, I was just washing my face normally and by the time I was done washing my face, my mascara was also completely off. Uh, so you don't need to, you know, sort of wriggle the tubes off or anything. This just sort of rinses off really easily. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this mascara is that it's not volumizing at all. It is lengthening. Um, I'm not sure if it holds a curl, but I think it does because, um, I mean, right now I have a really bad um, eyelash curler. It basically doesn't curl my lashes at all, so I have to pick up a replacement Shiseido one soon. Um, so I'll see how good this is at holding the curl, but it is very lengthening. It's much My lashes are much longer than they um, naturally are, so that's that. And that was about eight pounds, so pretty good. The last thing I got is this Laura Mercier Mineral Powder Foundation, and um, the reason I wanted to get a mineral foundation, even though you know my HG foundation is the Dior Nude Liquid Foundation, and it was the only one I used for about a year. Uh, I really like it, but it's really hot and humid here in Hong Kong, and um, when I sweat, it just I just can't stand like feeling really sticky all the time and it tends to wear off really quickly because of the humidity 
So I just I wanted to try out a mineral foundation and I've never tried powder foundations before so I'm really not used to the finish which is more matte. Um, I usually like a dewy finish um, and I always always used to use a liquid foundation and before that I used a cream to powder compact, the Bobbi Brown one. So um, again this purchase was influenced by Coco LaRue because she raved about it so much and it comes like this. I forgot to close the sift but basically half of it has the holes where the powder comes out and then this plastic bit you twist over like that and um, it covers the um, opening so uh, that's really good it prevents your powder from going everywhere and it's good for traveling as well um, so I'm shade natural beige which is a perfect match so that's good. Um, the powder is very, very finely milled. It's um, creamy and very, very smooth. Um, Coco LaRue did say that it's um, much more hydrating than the Bare Minerals, which she found a bit dry in comparison. Uh, this is SPF 15 in it, which is great. Um, and it leaves a very natural finish. Um, it's like a satin finish. It looks like real skin. It feels like real skin, but even better, it's like very, very smooth very very smooth skin and um, it doesn't transfer so you can touch your face or you can touch you, can, you know other people can touch your face and you know it won't transfer and I imagine it wouldn't transfer in your clothes either and that's another thing I had about liquid foundations is that I couldn't touch my face because it would come off on my fingers even if I'd set it with uh, my MSF natural so those are the pros of this product um, the cons, I don't think it covers enough for me because I do have quite a lot of acne scarring, like hyperpigmentation and um, I did layer this quite a bit I probably put about three uh, thin layers of it all over my face and buffed it in and I used my Bobbi Brown Kabuki brush which I really don't like because it sheds like crazy um, look at that, I just pulled out two uh, yeah, so I'm not crazy about this Kabuki brush, but it is the type of brush that you're supposed to use for mineral foundations. Um, so, another thing, I really, really loved um, the effect, the coverage and the finish that I got yesterday when the um, Laura Mercier makeup artist applied it on me. But, you know, the difference is that she used the Laura Mercier mineral primer beforehand which is a liquid primer but it dries to a powder finish which makes it very um, suitable for mineral powder foundations because um, it's not advisable to apply powder on top of uh, liquid or cream which is what uh, regular primers are so because their mineral primer is um, a powder finish it um, provides for perfect uh, application of another powder product and I felt like it sort of I had better coverage yesterday when she did it on my face and also the primer also served to minimize the appearance of the pores I have on my cheeks so I didn't get that yesterday because um, I didn't have enough cash on me at the time so I'll probably be picking that up next week um, and I'll see whether there are any improvements in that aspect the other thing, another thing is that um, my skin like when I put on my makeup I tend to get a bit tend to sweat a little bit when I'm here in Hong Kong because it is so hot so when I started sweating just now um, my face started like itching a bit, it felt a bit irritated like right now I still feel very very slightly itchy so it could be that I'm allergic to one of the ingredients I know that a lot of people are allergic to bismuth which is in a lot of mineral foundations and it is in this one because I saw the ingredients list um, so I'll see that how that goes and uh, yeah, so because it doesn't give me enough coverage, I was thinking that I might need to use a concealer as well. So, um, I'm guessing it would be better to apply the concealer before the foundation so that it's under the foundation because, um, the cream concealer probably wouldn't look very good on top of a powder. So, if you guys use mineral foundations, let me know whether you put your concealer on before your foundation or after because I'd really like to know. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say so far about this foundation. Um, it is very natural looking and feels nice and smooth. And application is easy, except for, you know, my annoying brush that sheds. But, um, 
Yeah, so far that's all I have to say. Uh, it might be a lot better with the mineral primer. I'll let you guys know. And I think this is a good way to go in the summer with the powder foundation because um, if you have oily skin, which I do, uh, it helps to keep your skin um, more matte and um, the makeup artist says that it does control your oil a little. So um, I'll see how it wears today. I'll be going out later in the heat and humidity. So um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated and uh, when I get a better eyelash curler, I'll let you know how this is as well and whether it keeps the curl. But so far, I'm really loving uh, this eye cream, the eye gel the most out of the three purchases. So, yeah, that's all I got yesterday. Um, I'm supposed to be on a spending ban, but these products don't really count because they're kind of like replacement products. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video, and um, if you did, please subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!